How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Melina, Fia and Rani. Part 2. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Pool of a tarnished. Melina kicked out at a nearby table with a shriek and scented flying, books and candles all. Near the door, and she rewarded her with a flat look for her tantrum. He went summarily ignored. As well he should. Gideon's man could glare at her all day for all she cared, his ire would avail him not a jot. For you see her anger was not directed his way. She almost wished it were. Things would be so much simpler. My lady. Corin dared to peek round the corner. Are you alright? I heard a crash. Melina glared bloody red daggers at the prophet, and he withdrew. Good man. Wise man. He knew not to mess with an angry woman. Unlike some. Never in her short life had she been so singularly frustrated by a single being nay. Utterly confounded by one man, a single soul such as this. Yet here she stood, seething like some churlish child. It galled her to no end. Bad enough that Naruto paid little heed to suggestion or such, bad enough that he seemed content to wander without a worry in the world, bad enough that he'd proven himself wholly incapable of doing anything the easy way, but this. This was too far. Even for her. Atrish was positively aggrieved at his abrupt disappearance, and Roderica feared him dead. He was not of course. Even now their pact persisted, she could sense him. Which was precisely what alarmed her so. By the Erd tree, what was he doing in Kaled? At first she thought he was off seek General Radon, but no, he was puttering about the wilds with with a dragon of all things. It rankled her to no end. Twould be a simple matter to decorporealize herself and go herring after him, but even that would take time. Days perhaps, to track him down. She could hardly teleport to his sight at such a distance after all. Even if she could, she would not be able to drag the tree sentinel after her so easily, let alone the spirit tuner. Their place was at the round table hold she reasoned, out of sight, out of mind. Wasn't it? Her tarnish did not want for distractions, and as such she would endeavor to keep him on track. She had been created with a singular task in mind. Nothing more. She knew her purpose. Her goal. Clearly this tarnish did not know his. Someone would have to beat it into his head, and would not be her. He could not save everyone and everything. He'd merely been lucky thus far. One could only hope Caleb would teach him that lesson. Melina prayed it would. She shuddered to think what his plans might be. Who knew what manner of depravity he was getting up to without her guidance? Lech. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Beryl pursed her lips and glared at his back. Thou art a knave. That's nice. All she received was a half-hearted wave for her efforts. You're pretty, too. She hissed. Do not ignore me, you fiend. He still didn't answer her of course, the absolute fiend. Instead he kept right on marching, forcing her to follow him or risk being left behind left to fend for herself in her weakened state. As she was no, she knew such would be a death sentence. She was the mother of dragons, and yet in this current fleshy form, her own children scarcely knew her. They did not recognize their matriarch. To linger in her barrow now would surely spell her doom. They would have to fend for themselves for a time until she regained her strength. Her true form was large and powerful indeed, but she'd not moved for how long. Beryl missed a step. The answer escaped her, and the dragoness realized with a bleed of panic that she didn't couldn't. Recall how long. Many moons had passed since she first found herself entrapped by that wicked witch's rod. A very long time indeed, then. A cursed demigod. Her barrow had been both bountiful and peaceful before she came along. How many children did she lose when that foul flower first bloomed? How many eggs had perished in clutches hence? More than she cared to count. Wretched Melania. She would suffer when they met again. In the meantime, she would follow this one. Like her kin Lancey axe before her, she would wear this human guise for a time, but only that. A short while. Little more. She would stay with this one until her strength was recovered, and not a moment more. She would not be tricked. She would not be beguiled into falling for a mere mortal as her daughter had with that fool Vike. Feelings had led Lancey axe astray, as all humans oft did. Where had love led her? Nowhere. To madness and despair. She would not succumb to such. You know, if you keep glaring at me like that, you're gonna go blind. Grrrrr. Twasn't her fault. She could not feel free without her wings and tail, she dare not conjure them in this fleshy guise for fear of falling over outright. Merely holding this form at all threatened to exhaust her, but she would not consent to ride the fiend's horse. She was a proud warrior. She had no need of a some simple steed. Not she. Come on, now. Again his voice rose to mock her for her failure. You're falling behind. Keep up. He clapped his hands. Chop, chop. A trickle of fire escaped her clenched teeth. Whose fault is that? Thy legs are too long. Thou walketh too fast. And you complain too much. Came the answering titter. Try smiling a little. Beryl huffed. 
Who was he to talk to her as such? She was the mother of dragons. He was just a squishy mortal. A mere tarnished. Twas his fault she was in this mess. And really, where was he leading her? He didn't seem to know himself, down, down, down they went, deeper into the Kaled wilds, pausing at odd intervals, but never lingering in one place for long. More than once they stumbled upon embattled soldiers facing horrid abominations. The latter he put to the torch. The former he spared. Still he did not stop, even to bask in tear thanks. After some time, his goal became apparent to her eyes, if only partially. He was in search of something. Or perhaps someone. Though she knew neither what nor who. Why are we wandering, lech? Eventually, she asked him. This pointless posturing avails you not. All right, I tried. Here at last, Naruto finally looked over his shoulder, betraying some irritation. Would you stop calling me a lech? I ain't done a thing to you. He squinted back at her, briefly resembling the mighty beast he housed within. If anything been perfectly pleasant. Beryl's face flamed, even as her horns twitched. You saw every inch of mine body. You touched. Lady, he countered, with all the exasperation of a parent explaining something to a small child, I got you out that rod. If not for me you'd still be lying there, wasting away. Cut me some slack. HMMPH. Slack, he said. She crossed both arms before her bosom. I would have freed Minisulf eventually. Oh. Is that so? His tone told her she'd had blundered into an altogether trap, but she for the life of her, she couldn't see where. Well, if you say so. Was that his angle? Did he think to impress her with his prowess as dragons had before? I will not mate with thee, if that is thine desire. Wasn't asking you to. His right eye began to twitch. You know, I thought a dragon turning into a human would be pretty cool and all, but you're starting to kill the appeal. Then see Clancy acts if I offend you so. She bared her fangs in a sneer. But be warned, mine daughter is far less kind than I. It was not a kin's fault. Vike's descent into madness after touching the frenzied flame had left little Lanciax quite distraught. Even now she sought a way to cure her beloved dragon knight. Silly girl. The only cure for the three fingers touch was death. Still a better fate than that of poor Fortisax. Naruto scoffed. If this is kind, I'd hate to see a pissed off dragon. He paused suddenly, touching a hand to his head. She frowned. Does something ail thee? Not you. He waved a hand half-heartedly her way. At this place. There's so much pain in this place. He touched a hand to his temple, gritting his teeth. So many emotions. Negativity in spaces. Those eyes drifted shut, paying her little head. Gotta fix this place. Have to fix it. Something twitched in the worm's heart. It felt like pity. You are but one man. You can only do so much. Have you not seen the clones I've been sending out? Mere copies. She'd seen one vanish with a single hit. They will avail thee not where are you looking now? Because his eyes had snapped open suddenly and his head whipped around, startling her terribly. But those wild blue orbs weren't fixed on her. They pivoted, regarding the distant spire of a crumbling church. Narrowed. Then he was off, shooting forth like an arrow loosed from a bow. All that remained was a fading plume of dust. Beryl balked. Wait. She stumbled after him, cursing her human legs all the while. I say, wait. He kept running. Wait at once, blast thee. There was so much to fix here in the Kaled wilds. Too much for one man, certainly. It would take an army to undo the damage here. The longer Naruto wandered, the more certain he became of this immutable thought, and in time, thought became fact. And the more he wandered, the more clones he'd sent out, desperate to stem the side of rot and all the pain he felt here. Kill the monsters, save the soldiers, fix what he could, smack down those who wouldn't listen. Unfortunately in doing so, he'd made a bit of a blunder, one he'd realized too late to correct. But so many perspectives dozens, easily taking in so much as once, his mind was beginning to fray. He experienced it all. Every moment of pain. Every death. Every twisted sight. Creating more to compensate for the deaths of the first wave only made it worse. Yet still he persisted. He had to. He must. If don't, who will? You need to stop. It's only been a day, and already you're reaching your limit. If you don't rest soon, you'll break. Oddly enough, he felt the ring on his finger pulse in agreement. Mfeen. He slurred. Just a little longer. Limgrove might have had a rotten ruler in the form of Godric, but at least the landscape itself wasn't actively rotting. Not like this place. How could he rest when everything around him was suffering? His senses twisted again, pinpointing another pulse of pain. Numbly, he followed it. There. To the east. Coming from that crumbling church on the hill. He sensed life. Harmless human life. Not mindless or mad like those wild beasts, nor those twisted knights shambling through the swamps. To cut him down like those soldiers. Faint. Flickering. Fading, like a dying flame. Really, the wilds were the worst. 
everything bar a certain surly dragon girl wanted to kill him. As he crept closer to the ruined stone edifice, he realized it wasn't quite as abandoned as he'd first surmised. Closer inspection revealed a pair of ghastly guards manning the entrance, spears in hand. They were even more monstrous than those giant hounds. A small sigh escaped him as he rolled up his sleeves. Blue eyes flashed gold. Well, he grumbled, at least they ain't ghosts. The pests did not die well. The rot burned. It vibrated in Millicent's veins, seethed in her soul, fouled her very flesh. Every breath was in agony, the very act of keeping her eyes opened, threatened to drain what little life she had left. Even her mind her last bastion of refuge. Was not spared. Whispers hunted her every waking moment like so many buzzing flies, stealing away even the petty semblance of peace that madness might offer. Truly, if there was suffering worse than this, she did not wish to experience it. Worse, she couldn't die, not truly. Not as she wished. The rot prevented even her own demise for now. It would not grant her the destined death she sought, no matter how much she wished for it. She could only lay and waste away. With each passing hour she felt herself slip further into the abyss. How it burned. How it stung. It would be so easy to give in to the whispers. To simply let the rot out and bloom and bloom until nothing remained. The cursed rot. Why did it have to be her? What had she done to deserve this? Fate denied her even the memory of it. Was it not enough that she'd severed her own arm? How much more would this foul taint take from her, and why was it dark all of a sudden? Against her better judgment, Millicent looked up. Bright blue eyes beamed back at her, set within a whiskered face framed by unruly blonde hair. Those same cheeks dimpled in a sunny smile, one that was decidedly offset by his haggard appearance. He, The young man chirruped happily. You alright, there? Alright. Her temper stirred and the rod in her rose with hit. Alright of course she wasn't no, 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 don't take the bait. No doubt this was another figment of her addled imagination, another specter come to torment her for failures she could no longer remember. Had it chosen the guise of hope this time? She knew not this stranger. Millicent hung her head, lacking the energy to even shoo him away. Please, she croaked. Leave me me. You're just another hallucination. I shan't be tempted. She would not give in to the rot. She knew not why, only that she shouldn't. She mustn't. The tiny core that was her soul, which had forgotten so much, still remembered the warning she had given her, even now. Sweet though the whispers were, she knew she must never heed them. Do not bloom, little Millicent. You mustn't bloom. Nay, never bloom. Ha. Huh. A low chortle reached her ears, cutting into the memory. Hallucination. That's a new one. Never been called that before. A spark of irritation seethed within the rot. With it came a tiny surge of strength. What, still here? A weak growl tore free from her. Begging with you. You know, you're being pretty rude. Much to her chagrin, the hallucination knelt before her. I'm just trying to help. Did he not understand? Her lips curled in a pained grimace. I cannot be helped. He leaned back on his haunches. I disagree. Still, he persisted. She was not having this conversation. She would not speak to this golden ghost, and yet he seemed determined to drag it from her regardless. Had she control of her legs, she would have simply walked away from him. As she was now, she could only turn her head to the side and sulk. Was this to be her end, then? Tormented by the madness. There you are. Now what? Millicent could no longer raise her head. That brief burst of strength had faded, taking what little she had left. But she heard the voice, saw the pair of pale, almost gray feet pad into her field of vision. Yet another figment of her imagination come home to roost. Twas a woman. And this one had left her ankles exposed. How unseemly. Oh, hey. Distantly, she heard the blonde specter speak. You caught up. Good. Think you can help me with this? The woman scoffed, sniffed, then recoiled with a yelp. Impossible. Her lower lip curled with disgust. She's infected by the rot. I would not touch her for all the gold in the lands between. I shan't be entrapped again. Millicent heard the man sigh. Gray. I shall not. She snapped. And neither should you. Keep away from her. Remarkably sensible, for a figment of her imagination, this. She's right. Leave me be. Nope. Two fingers flitted out to flick her forehead. Little more than a poke. And yet. Millicent jolted upright, gasping in surprise. Her body screamed in protest at the sudden movement, but she forced her eyes open once more, if only to regard the baffling blonde looming over her. A trembling hand rose to touch her forehead. She she'd felt that. Pain. Minor perhaps, but she'd felt him touch her. Hallucinations could not do such. They're real. No, it matters. Her foggy vision cleared, if only for a moment, to see them. If you are wise, you will leave immediately. The stump of her right arm pulsed painfully, and she gripped it with a gasp, strangling a whimper of pain in her throat. My flesh writhes with scarlet rot. It is more than a simple disease, it is a curse. 
not to be meddled with by man. There. She'd set her peace. Real or not, this one would wish nothing to do with her now. To touch her would put him at risk of infection, agonizing sickness and finally, certain death. She tried to quell the tiny pang of sorrow that followed. It had been nice to speak with someone, if only in passing. But it could never be. Only those putrid pests loved the rot. All else should give her a wide berth. She closed her eyes and let herself drift, certain that burish blonde braggart would be well and truly gone when she opened them again. The woman gave an annoyed in response to a question Millicent hadn't heard. Do what you will. I'll have no part in this. The blonde laughed. Such a grumpy dragon. Mortal, I will bite thee. Promises, promises. Wait. Slim arms encircled Millicent's waist. Why was she moving? Rising into the air? Pushing away the cobwebs from her thoughts she forced her eyes open once more. The stranger had indeed walked away for all of an instant. With her eyes closed, she'd not seen him spin around, swept both arms under her and oh, dear. Millicent realized what must have transpired and squeaked, a sharp unladly like sound she had made only once before. Cease. She cried out. Why are you carrying me like some princess? You'll be infected with a rot. Oh, is that what this is? His smile shone down at her, brighter than the Erd tree itself. The rod in her tried to touch him and was summarily repelled. Heh. Tickles. Pickles. Did he have resistance to it? No matter. It wouldn't last. It never did. Sometimes the rot took one swiftly. At other times, slowly. As it had her. In the end, his fate would be no different than those of the cleanred knights who had served Melania. Who was Melania? No, no. Focus. Leave go of me. She kicked out feebly against his chest, feeling ever bit a child. What are thou doing? This is no place to die. He looked down at her, heedless of the veins scrawling against his flesh. I'm taking you somewhere safe. The tiny, bitter laugh burst out of her. This is Caled. Tis not safe anywhere. She was not prepared for the growl that followed. Then I'll make it safe. Something in those words, nay, the noble presence behind them, stirred her spirit. A seed of something sprouted in her. Almost felt like hope. Even now she could feel the rot writhing in her, potent as ever. It wanted in to corrode and infect the stubborn young man who even now held her. It sought him as it had sought all others around, seeking another victim, a second means of infection. Feathers of death and dismay tried to coil around him as they had all before. Dot and yet still he stood tall. Don't worry. Mistaking her silence for confusion, the whiskered warrior touched her forehead with his chin. If I can grow back an eye, I'm pretty sure I can to the same for an arm maybe. Hope flowered in Millicent's heart and withered thrice as fast. What madness did he speak of? One could not simply restore an arm, not even the sorcerers of the academy. Maybe he was a hallucination after all, this could merely be a mad fever dream brought on by the rot. Growing back an arm? Only a fool would say such. A fool among fools indeed, the greatest fool of them all. The dragon woman snorted behind him. Foolish boy. Naruto clicked his tongue at her. Angsty dragon. Go stand in the corner if you're gonna keep bitching at me. The ghost of a smile touched Millicent's lips despite herself. So he had a bit of spine after all. You dare. There he did indeed, because he laughed and laid Millicent down against a nearby headstone. She scarcely had the strength to squint when his body blazed gold. A pitiful noise escaped her lips as she averted her eyes. So bright. If he'd shimmered before, then now he was well and truly the sun. Merely laying in his presence made her aching body feel warm. As she squinted on, the blonde rubbed his palms together. Might wanna clench your teeth miss, Millicent. She whimpered, dreading what was to come. My name is Millicent. Naruto. Nice Tomicha. Think happy thoughts. She bridled but a little as the whiskered one laid his right hand on her shoulder, lacking the strength to do anything else. Her spirit stilled as he reached out with the other to grip her remaining hand. Rough fingers worn by war threaded against hers, bringing a faint flush to her pale face. My. To touch her twice now without even commencing courtship. How very vulgar. He'd not even written her a single letter. Terribly forward. I do not see the point in Theaeus. Her words peeked into a wild bleed of pain, as the mangled stump of her shoulder burned with unseen heat. Something flowed down her ruined arm, burning hotter than the rod ever had. Her back arched, lips parting in a wordless scream. Every cell in her body burned, in moments she found herself doubling over, weeping, wailing, eyes burning with tears. Stop. She gasped out. It hurts. I beg of thee. Cease. Please. He listened at once, bless his simple soul, leaving her wasted and gasping for air. Something's resisting me. That tanned face stood creased in a scowl. Probably that rot thing you're talking about. Still, it worked a little. Millicent looked down and balked. There was a stub there. Half her arm jutting out through her tight and tattered sleeve, just short of her elbow. Her eyes bulged. What are you? Someone who wants to help you. 
His smile was telling. Does it matter? She opened her mouth to argue, then deferred. No, I suppose not. On a whim, she made a reckless decision. Her days were numbered. She would rather die a warrior than a worthless wretch. She had been a warrior once. She was certain of that. She remembered the grief she'd felt as she severed her sword arm, that vain attempt to stop the rod in its early days, before her sisters cast her aside. This was a chance she would not let slip by. Finish it. She rasped. His brow shot up. You sure? It's gonna hurt. Please. I beg of thee. Let me die as I lived. She raised her gaze, hoping to convey her intent with a steady look as much as words. With both arms. Alright, but nobody's gonna die on my watch. She watched him like a hawk as he rubbed his palms together. That odd mark on his right hand seemed to shimmer softly in the low light. This time she thought herself ready for it. She was not. He laid both hands on her, exhaled softly, spoke something under his breath and then. Pain. Millicent cried out, gritting her teeth as bone and sinew erupted from the fouled flesh of her arm. A far cry from before perhaps, but pain nevertheless. She gripped at him with her good hand. Sorry. She heard him mutter over her cries. Just hang on a little longer. I've almost got it there. Sobbing, hiccuping, she pushed against him, instinctively seeking comfort. He held her, patted her head. Hummed a little. And finally, it was done. Naruto laid her down to rest upon a softer patch of ground, and it was then that she saw it, felt it, sensed it. Bleary eyes blinked, gazing upon the pale expanse of her new limb. It twitched and trembled, fitfully at first as she exerted her will upon it. Move. It had to move. This would all be for nothing if she couldn't make it move. Tremulous fingers curled into a fist. Millicent released a breath she hadn't realized she'd been holding. Just like that, he'd regrown her lost limb. A healthy arm, free of the rigorous rot that had once pervaded it but not for long. Even now it ached and itched as the foul disease ought to eat away at it once again. Her spirits fell at the sensation. She'd feared as much. The reprieve he granted her was temporary at best. You have my thanks, but the rot still writhes within me. I beg you, keep your distance. Ain't done yet. Dot dot what? I beg your pardon, good sir. Blinking through teary eyes her gaze fixed on his chest, noting the faint shimmer beneath his ratted jacket. Her mouth went dry as she sensed the faint pulse of power within. The ghost of an old memory stirred within her, indistinct, faded by time, but prevalent nonetheless. She'd seen such a thing once before. But where? Is that a great rune? Yup. He smacked his lips and made her comfortable once more. Got it from a guy named Godric. Godric the Graved. Memories came rushing back. He'd slain him, them. No mere tarnished was this. Perhaps this was the one. The one to be accepted by the Erd Tree. Destined to restore the broken Elden Ring, to make what was once fractured whole again. She looked up at him, and for a moment, she saw something in him. A glimpse of the future that might yet come to pass. Long live the new Elden Lord. All right, her savior hummed, now that we've got your arm sorted, lem try a different approach this time. Millicent betrayed herself with a whimper. I'm not ready. The knight, for Millicent could see this proud, stubborn sod as nothing less, seemed to take offense at that. Don't worry. It won't hurt this time. He hooked a finger in hers. Promise. Truly. Her voice hitched. The look he gave her was pure steel. I'm gonna fix your everything. Millicent shook her head. She could just imagine him, running about trying to help everyone. It was admirable and unbearably naive. She would appreciate the return of her arm, short-lived though her life was. Twas a boon she not thought to hope for, but he'd granted it to her. To hope for anything else would surely be folly. Wouldn't it? You've done enough. He scoffed. Who decided that? No, wait. I haven't prepared mile fa. She bit her fist to stifle a gasp. Oh. Rather than set to work on her arm and regrow the severed stump as he tried before, he went to to the work on the rest of her. Starting with her chest. She tensed at once, expecting pain. There was none. By contrast this was warm. It felt quite nice actually. Very nice. Her body bucked and her arms betrayed her, hooking behind his neck. As if she'd been placed in a warm bath and left to simmer, so too did she feel the aches and pains of her body melt away. Little mewling gasps fled from her lips as she buckled against him, head buried into his shoulder holding on for fear life. Warm. So very warm. She could feel that strange energy of his working its way through her, flowing like a warm river. To let go now was to drown. Little fireworks burst beneath her skin, ripping the rod asunder faster than it regenerate. Beating it back, tamping it down, containing it, sealing it. Do you have to make those sounds? She looked up to find his face gone red, red as her hair. It's kinda distracting. Forgive me I on another moan escaped her as her head tilted back. I can't stop. It was as if he were bringing back every sensation she'd ever lost all at once, every feeling that had been dulled and blunted by the rod. In her fevered state, it proved too much. Far, far too much. 
she tried to endure, to keep her self-consciousness as that strange red energy hammered its way into her, but she just couldn't. She hit her breaking point and plummeted over the edge with a sharp cry. Utter sensory overload, complete and total. Millicent couldn't take it any longer. Shamefully, she passed out before Naruto could finish mending her body. And everything changed. Though she still slumber? Looks like it. Lem check. At Grirl's prodding Naruto crept over to Millicent where she lay against Torrent's saddlebags. She dozed on, blissfully unaware of his presence. He pressed a finger into the slumbering woman's pale cheek. The redeed made a tiny noise of protest and batted ineffectually at his hand to no avail. On a whim he jabbed her again, to which she wrinkled her nose, with a whine, but didn't wake. Adorable. The thought didn't feel odd to him in the least. She looked more at peace now than she'd ever been. Good for her. She deserved some rest. If Torrent at all minded the extra weight, he wasn't complaining. Quite the contrary. He seemed rather content to canter about at a leisurely peace behind them, well away from the monsters of Caled. A few sweet raisins had done wonders to settle his nerves, amidst the giant beasts, and he'd been sure to ply Melina's friend with them since. It was the least he could do. He didn't know the first thing about horseback riding, but that was no reason not to make use of Torrent, no. Good boy. He murmured, stroking the horned horse's head. You're doing great. Lem know if she wakes up, eh? His faithful steed nosed his hand and snorted once. Naruto beamed. I'll take that as a yes. Beryl made an irritated noise. She'd been sullen ever since he put her in the corner. Do all humans sleep this long? They do when they're exhausted. He glanced her way with a quelling look. Be nice. She's been out for an entire day now, the poor thing. Probably gonna be starving when she wakes up. That was putting it lightly. He'd managed to burn most of the rod as Millicent called it, outer system. What traces remained wouldn't do her any lasting harm, so long as he kept an eye on her. If her condition worsened again, he'd just have to repeat the process. Right a cheeky little voice muttered in the back of his head, the process. Let's call it that. Definitely didn't do anything lewd. Her flushed face as she arrived in his lap, back arching, tiny cries escaping her lips Ga, Don't go there. Unbidden, his gaze sought Grerl once more. You've been awfully quiet since yesterday. She looked away, folding both arms before her bosom. I have nothing to say. Not gonna call me a lech again. Her shoulders twitched. No. Not even a knave. Nay. You're really that afraid of me? He wriggled his fingers at her as Jurea had once done to him long ago. Or maybe it's my hands. She bared her fangs in turn. Keep thy plans to thine self. I need no healing. Oh. That was it. He bit down on the laughter that threatened to bubble youp. It was a just a joke, oi. An uncomfortable silence stretched between the two of them as they trudged deeper into the depths. No soldiers barred their path. No monsters emerged to devour them whole. It was almost enough to make a man hope, it was. But he knew better. He hadn't cleared out Caled, he'd only beaten back the tide. The rot would return and birth more abominations. He'd fight them all with his clones. But how did one cure the land? For all his strength and skill, Naruto didn't know how. Healing a person was one thing, but this was half a continent. Millicent's rot had fought him every step of the way. Doing the same with the land itself. Why did you do it? Hmm? He blinked, nonplussed at Grerl's sudden inquiry. Didn't quite catch that. He went to such lengths to help her, a perfect stranger. Those cat-like eyes glared at him beneath her bangs. You even risked infection with her rod. Naruto stood his ground and set his jaw, not liking her tone. What of it? Her eyes flashed. I would know why, Rotquiller. That got a blink out of him. Rot what now? Rotquiller. The mother of dragons repeated plainly. In my tongue it would mean, he who quells the rod. Once I could have dismissed as a fluke, but twice. She sniffed. You have a gift. That girl didn't have much time left. Her organs were breaking down. If not for thee, she'd be a puddle of scarlet rot by now. A shiver stole over him. Had he really cut it that close? I don't need a reason to help people. Her slitted eyes narrowed. You have no ulterior motives. None at all. You could leverage your aid over the female, make her your concubine. Your slave. She seems the sort to honor her debts, to the exclusion of all else. Most would use that against her. Why would I do that? Slim shoulders rose and fell in a shrug. It is the way of these lands. Always has been. Naruto clicked his tongue and swallowed his gorge. If you need a reason to help someone who's hurting, there's something wrong with you. You're a noble sort. Like that general. Admirable but misguided. Her gaze flitted out to a castle in the distance and the dunes of sand beyond. This world will eat you alive if you let it. Best harden yourself while you can, before it's too late. He grinned right back, all steely determination. It can try. It will not try. It will succeed. She yanked on Torrent's reins and the somberness of her tone stuck with him. The lands between has seen the death of many men like you. 
As he looked on she began to count off the fingers of a pale hand. Godwin the Golden. General Radon. Miquela the Unalloyed. Demigods all, greater than thee to be sure, and where did they end up? She snapped her fingers. Dead, ruined, banished to parts unknown. But you. Her eyes held his over the fire. Paused. Considered. Who are you really? Naruto didn't like those eyes. They saw too much. Just a normal guy. Nay, I think not, because you are not. She tilted her head to regard him further. Sniffed once. Frowned. You aren't from these lands. Another quick inhalation, tasting the air, or perhaps his scent. Naruto wasn't sure he liked either notion. There. I thought as much. Her lips pursed into a thin line. Thou art a demigod, then. I should have known. The arrogance of thy kind knows no bounds. Those words stung from some reason, like the buzzing of a dozen flies. Him? A god. Just the thought of it made him feel sour. He wasn't a god. Not by a long shot, no, anything but that. He had scraped and spat and snarled for everything he had. His strength was the product of hard work and little else. Besides, what kind of god let people like Niji and Abito die? If he were truly a god, he could have saved everyone in the Fourth Shinobi War. But hand, had he? No. He shook his head slowly, bang swing. I'm no god. You're a demigod. Girl's level gaze met his own across the flames. No hint of that flustered dragon here, her calm was ice cold, colder than one of Haku's jutsu. Not one of Marika's or Radigan's whelps, but a demigod nonetheless. I can see it now. Thou art descended from one, thy blood diluted perhaps, but no less potent. You hold the spark of divinity within you. Thy kind comes from greatness. Is she talking about Asura? Or old man sage? The be. Karama creaked on eye open within his mind. We know you're a distant descendant of them. Technically speaking, given your feats. No, no, no. Don't you dare. You could be considered a demigod, too. Sorry, kid. Truth's the truth. Truth, he said. Naruto scoffed, truth was in the eye of the beholder. He was no demigod. In his mind, he never would be. Yet for all your strength, Gurl went on in spite of his sulking, you cannot save everyone. Let alone this rotten land. The rot you see before you hails from a goddess, not unlike Marika. She will not be so easily bested. Doesn't mean I won't try. Somebody's gotta stop it. Queen Marika, perhaps. Another shrug was his reward. She hasn't been seen for an age. She's likely dead. Her mouth curled in a bit of draconic derision. Or perhaps she fled these lands once they fell to ruin. Those of the Newman line have ever been cowards and cravens. She and her children with few exceptions. Had proven themselves the same. The ring on Naruto's finger pricked him most painfully. Ow. Blasted thing. You say that like you know, you know. Hum, let us speak of the past a while. Folding both legs beneath her, Grail did just that, forcing him to do the same or leave her behind. What do you know of this land's history? His brow furrowed. Less than I should. Understandable. A pale hand pushed a ringlet of pear hair from her eyes. You are not from this realm. She turned head toward the ruined remnants of a tree and spat, setting it ablaze to provide them some meager warmth. Allow me to summarize for your sake, then. Those bewitching orbs swung back to him, held him, as her voice dipped lower. In the time before the Elden Ring and the Erd Tree, twas a different age. An age of giants. Of beasts. Of dragons. He listened, rapt with attention as Grail wove her tale. Then came Marika and in her precious golden order. Venom crept into the story, tainting it. The usurped Lord Placidus Axe drove the dragons away and slew the giants. And for what? She turned her head and spat. Look what has become of them now. Such is the folly of mankind. Right, because she wasn't biased about this at all. You feel strongly about this, huh? Placidus Axe was is. Akin to my ancestor. She pulled a face. In your terms, he would be my great-great-great-grandfather. Under his reign, the Age of Dragons was a blessed one. I remember it well. A time where strength ruled, where death was not fettered by small-minded souls. A rare bite of longing nodded her words, her gaze gone wistful as she turned an eye to the sky. Might made right in those days. None of this endless beepering about that thy kind seemed to favor so. You would have fared well in such an age. Maybe. Naruto found he disagreed. You're saying the strong ruled, but what happened to the weak? The silence proved telling. Almost damnably so. Doesn't sound like an ear I'd enjoy. Fair. Concern flashed across her face as she mistook his tone for something else. You are tired. I did not intend to keep you. She stood sharply, stiffly, stretching her limbs. Enough of my strength has returned, and he knew the lie at once, we shall go our separate ways tomorrow. So soon. Indeed. Was that a flicker of hesitation he felt just now? Surely it was his imagination. I have responsibilities to which I must attend. Naruto blew out a sigh. He thought he would have been happy to be rid of this grumpy dragon girl. 
Not long ago, he might have. But he'd seen a different side of her. It was starting to grow on him. She might be wild and flighty, but there was wisdom beneath the anger and arrogance, a tired soul that he couldn't help but empathize with. Now if only she'd stop being so damn grumpy. His sixth sense shrilled a warning as something approached their campfire. Hey, ah, boss. A familiar voice one of his clones. Called out to him as the figure stepped into view. We me e I'd have a problem. Scree. A piercing screech split the air from the main road. Burrito craned his neck back. Do I want to know what that was? Beryl's head whipped around, eyes wide as dinner plates. That can't be. Millicent whimpered wordlessly in her deep sleep. It almost sounded like an apology. Rot. His wings ached. His scales screamed. Even his very breath was fouled. He had only one recourse for his torment. And so he screamed. My baby. How is that a child? It was another dragon, of course. Naruto nearly did a double take as he beheld the brain beast in the distance. Even from here he could see the dragon wasn't well. Patches of ghastly white limbed its already pale body, further blighting what he could only assume was scarlet rod. Far smaller than Grerl's to be sure, but no less dangerous. As he looked on it shrieked at a twisted dog that had come too close to its hideaway. The hound vanished in a cloud of rod and succumbed instantly. What remained was snapped up by the dragon's jaws and devoured post-haste. Karama made a squelching noise. Well, that's unsanitary. Naruto's clone scratched the back of its head. We kinda stumbled onto him and woke him up. He's been rampaging ever since. Rampage was a tame word. The dragon was biting rocks, now. Beryl had a far less pleasant reaction. That is a kizkis. She explained hastily as they gazed upon the rotten creature. One of mine children. The youngest. A naked longing lurked in her voice. I did not know he suffered so her eyes all but snapped to his. You, she swallowed on her pride, nearly choked on it, then mastered herself. You will help him, won't you, Rotquiller? That's what you do. Help people. Naruto's brow rocketed into his hair. My, my. How quickly the tables had turned. Was it wrong that he felt just a little smug, now? Just a bit. Thought you didn't want me doing that. He planted his feet. You just said so. I Grail whined and took a moment to comport herself. He is my kin. He suffers. Surely you won't leave him like this. The golden eyebrow climbed higher. She squirmed like a naughty child under his gaze. You sure that's a he? Leave it to the clone to speak his mind. Don't think the boss can handle many more dragon girls, not if they're anything like you. Beryl smacked the clone in the stomach and dispelled it. He cannot change his shape. She slashed clawed fingers through the smoke as the haws faded. Such as a skill gained over a great many years, years he doesn't have, will not have, if you don't do something. Karama. Don't look at me. If you want to wrestle with a dragon, that's your business. Help my son. I beg of thee. Before he cold think to stop her, Grail prostrated herself before him, physically kneeling and all but pressing her face into the rot ruined earth. I'll give you whatever you want. Mine mind. My body. Please. I'll bear your children. Whatever you desire. Boy. You're taking this way too far. Get up. Come on, up. Stand up damn it. You're embarrassing me. Beryl didn't budge. Not an inch. She only made a pitiful noise. It sounded like a sob. How could he ignore emotions like that? She was just too damn honest. I was already gonna help, geez. Don't beg. Naruto stalked down the rise. The Kizkis whirled as a shadow fell over his bulk. Rotted though he was, the dragon's instincts remained. Intruder. Trespasser. Rip and tear. Bid and scream. Kill and kill and. Maddened eyes looked up. Gazed into the peerless golden slits of a furious fox. Be a good boy and hold still or else. The dragon whimpered. Melina found them the next morning. Naruto sensed the maiden before he saw her, felt her coming as he picked at the dying embers of their campsite. In truth, he was amazed it had taken her this long at all. He'd half expected Melina to hunt him down like a stag, drag his sorry hide back to the round table, and give him a telling off besides. But no this time her arrival proved a silent one, wholly absent of the previous pomp and circumstance she'd used to get his attention that fateful day. Hey. He pushed himself up off his haunches, dusted off his tattered trousers, and turned to face her. Long time no see. A suit of armor smacked into his chest. Naruto caught it with both hands, then frowned once he realized exactly what he was holding. He, recognizing the draconic scales at once, they were the same color as the carcass he'd hauled to the round table only a few days ago. Light armor, drake scale, a bright burgundy shade fitted with amber pauldrons and greaves tapering off into intricate metalwork, he had no hope of describing. And so he didn't bother. Never in his life had he worn armor, but this he didn't have words. Master Hugh finished it just this morning. 
He knew at once by her words that Melina was terribly cross with him, or maybe that was her index finger currently digging into his ribsage. I'll not have you wandering about the lands between looking like some wastrel. Garama offered a low whistle. If this is what he can do with subpar materials well. I wonder what else he's capable of. Naruto cradled his prize close to his chest. But your way of saying you missed me. Melina's face closed down at once. No. Her emotion said otherwise. Oh, you did miss me. Oh oh oh. His laughter peeked into a yelp when she kicked his shin. All right, all right. Thanks for the armor. I'll give you my regards when I get back. Naruto let it be, but paused just short of donning it. A quick glance confirmed no one save Melina was looking his way. Not yet. That could soon change. Grerl might not appreciate him wearing armor like this. Could be one of her kids. She might even take offense. It wouldn't stop him of course, but still. Is all one and the same to me. He heard her voice rise near the fire. That armor is yours by right of conquest. Besides, that's not one of mine. The blonde released a breath he hadn't realized he was holding. Great. I'll put in on right away. Looks easy enough. Melina made a garbled noise and looked away as he doffed his ruined clothing. Naruto kept an eye on her all the while. Her gaze traveled to Millicent's prone form, sprawled sleepily atop a crude bed fashioned from Torrent saddlebags. Her eyes traveled yet further and alighted upon the restored Akiskis, slumbering peacefully not a yard away from the spectral steed itself. Her right eye began to twitch. By the time it settled upon Grerl, gnawing happily on a haunch of meat, Melina looked like she was about to have a stroke. No shortage of companions, as ever. She clicked her tongue. I don't know why I'm surprised. You truly are an odd sort. To be fair, I kinda stumbled into them. Truly. She almost looked back, flushed, then thought better of it. You have the devil's own luck, tarnished. Nah. He stumbled, then stomped his way into a boot. The fit was perfect. Hugh knew his stuff. I'm just a simple man, making my way in the world. That, or a fool. Beryl had held her tongue for the last minute or so, staring over long at Melina. No longer. You overreach yourself, kindling maiden. Now she granted her a small, subtle smile. Whatever would your mother say? Melina's face drained of all color. How do you? My eyes see much. The mother of dragons made a show of digging a bit of dirt out her nails. It is allowed to me by Lord Placidus Axe. Naruto quirked a brow. There was something about that word. Kindling. Melina pivoted so quickly she damn near blurred. Nothing to concern yourself with. Why was she panicking? Something had her spooked, but what? Dunno, sounds pretty important to me. Forget what's thou heard. Her good eye flashed. Forget. That he heard those words somewhere before. She spoke just a bit too quickly for his liking, her voice breaking on the last word. He could have pressed her for details, pushed the envelope further. He was well within his rights, easily within his power, too. Melina could hardly stop him if he tried to wring answers out of her. And yet something in her pleading expression held him back. Pressing her now might lead to something he wouldn't be able to take back. Fine. With a weary sigh relented. Look, if I worried, yeah, I'm sorry. He laid a hand on his shoulder. But I've got work to do here. I am aware. Tis why I have come. She pounced on his words, setting another alarm wailing in the back of his head. There is a great rune nearby, a powerful one at that. Stepping back but a little, she tugged herself from his grasp, but her eye never left his. Not once. I thought you might wish to seek it. Clever girl. Naruto perked up regardless. Is that so? Indeed. The maiden managed a smile. Twold be better to have it in your possession, would it not? All right, even he could see through Melina's machinations here. She was clearly trying to push him after this ratten fellow, urging him onto another great rune. But why? What interest did she have in collecting them? It didn't make a lick if she intend to use them. No, there wasn't a vent the slightest hint of greed or avarice about her. She didn't seem to have any desire for such. So why? Does it matter? Our goals align for now. Beryl clicked her tongue, drawing him back to the present. Do not try to manipulate him, kindling woman. It won't end well for you. I have no desire to manipulate him. Melina drew herself upright with a huff. We have an accord. Nothing more. Enough. Speak plainly, or I will plainly separate thine head from thy shoulders. Burrito coughed into a fist. Well, that's one way to motivate her. Melina ducked her head, swallowed once, then nodded. But next she spoke her voice was terribly soft. The rune is held by General Radden. Millicent was awake. Burrito noticed at once, if only because he'd been keeping an eye on her as they neared the castle. It wasn't out of distrust, but rather, concern. For reasons he couldn't quite comprehend, Melina didn't seem much fond of the once rotten girl. Indeed, she went well out of her way to avoid any and all mention of their resident redeed. Almost as if she knew her. Wouldn't even walk near her at that. He sensed a story lurking there, but now wasn't the time for such things. 
please, water. Definitely thoughts for later, because once Millicent stirred atop Torrance and began begging for a drink, he couldn't help himself. He hastened to her side, canteen in hand, even gave her what remained of his field rations to chase down the lukewarm liquid as best he could. She ate sparingly, not once protesting, even when he helped her out the saddle and lowered her to the dirt. No surprise there. Poor thing must have been exhausted. Not so exhausted to ignore him however, the second he set her down she raised her gaze, golden eyes pinning him. You quelled the scarlet rot. More or less. Naruto quirked a brow. Good afternoon to you, too. When the recovering redeed sputtered to that effect, he craned his neck back, searching for another maiden. Hey Melina. Any chance you could get me a... Eh? She was already gone, banishing back into the ether from when she'd come. He clicked his tongue and glared at the fading motes of light. Sheesh. Who put a bee in her bonnet? She's awake, then. Grerel made a tutting noise behind him. Good. I shall scout ahead and inspect this fortress while she gets her bearings. Dot. A rueful chuckle escaped him. Pretty sure Melina called it a castle. She shrugged. Tis all one and the same to me. And if the gate ain't open. Her eyes flashed, cat-like slits narrowing and draconically. Then I shall knock it down. Come exix. Let them have their moment. Having said her piece, the mother of dragon sashayed off, leaving her looming son to lumber after her apace. Exix paused a moment to regard Millicent with a giant eye. Abruptly it leaned forward and gave her a soft nudge with its snout. Soft for a dragon, that is. Millicent squeaked and nearly fell over. Naruto barked a laugh and kept her upright. Don't mind him. He's a friendly fellow once you get to know him. This is friendly. Sure is. He ran a hand over the young dragon's mending scales, then gave it a nudging, sending the massive beast stumping after its mother. See? He's a good boy. I beg you forgiveness. Millicent's face flushed at the last as it plotted away. My apologies for fainting before I could thank you. It's just as you said. The rot it has ceased to ride. She reached up to grip her restored arm, seemed shocked to remember it was still there, then comported herself enough to continue. I may not understand it, but all the voices in my head are silent. Even the nightmares have abated. A fresh spot of color hit her cheeks, and S.H. ducked her head anew. I slept like a babe. I'll say. A laugh burst from his lips. You were out for a while. Once again, her pale visage darkened with color. A thousand apologies. Don't be embarrassed, it's fine. He patted her head without thinking, heedless of the curious noise she made. How are you feeling? Better. She frowned but a little when his palm pulled away. Though I can scarcely believe it, I can move as I please. She rubbed her wrist again, doubtless to make certain it was still there. It is all thanks to you. Was that adoration in her eyes? Naruto wasn't sure how to feel about that. The young warrior clearly respected his efforts, but he still couldn't bring himself to look her in the eye and meet the awe there. It wasn't as if he'd done anything particularly noteworthy. Anybody would have done the same. No. She shook her head, red lock swaying. You saved me. I will not forget that, so long as I live. She frowned when several strands of hair tickled her nose. Could you perhaps? Sure. But deft movements and a bit of cord, he held her bind her hair back into a loose bun. By thanks. With her crimson locks out of the way, she looked even more human than before. I'll never be able to repay you at this rate. No problem. Just be careful and try to avoid any sudden moves. He almost didn't want to say it, but he had to warn her all the same. I'm not sure if I got all that crap out. Millicent gasped and glared at her arm as though it had betrayed her. For a wild moment she looked as though she might cut it off again. The rot still remains within me. Even now. Only a little. He made a pinching motion with his thumb and forefinger to reassure her. If it comes back, I'll wipe it out, same as before. Her face lit up, and not for the reasons one might expect. Oh. She squirmed beneath his gaze, knees twisting in thinly veiled agitation. I see so you'll do that again. Naruto sputtered at the memory. If I have to. Millicent didn't make a sound. Her flustered expression spoke for her. Silence trained anew. Surprisingly, it was the redeed who finally usurped it. There is no way I could ever truly repay you, but, a hand dipped into the pouch at her side, I would like you to have this, by way of thanks. Out came her hand, clutching a golden medallion in her palm. A mere trifle it might be, but it would mean the world to me if you were to take it. Trembling fingers pushed it into his own. Consider it a token of my appreciation. On a whim, Naruto reached for it. Just holding it made him feel stronger. Strength he didn't necessarily need. What was the point in having more power? Without so much as a second thought, he pushed it back into her hands. You keep it. Millicent flinched. I beg your pardon. You need it more than me. His fingers closed around hers, forcing her to hold fast to the medallion. I'm tough enough without it. She tried to give it to him still, but he wouldn't have. It. I really don't need. Yes. You. Do. 
He stepped back and crossed both arms before his armored chest to rebuff her attempts entirely. You're still recovering, and I ain't gonna take away something that will help you. A grimace stole over his face as he remembered just where they were headed today. You'll probably need it in the days ahead. That spurred a different reaction in the recovering Redeed. You sound as if you're marching to your death. Her lips pursed into a thin line when he didn't deny the possibility. Just who do you intend to face here? Naruto told her in no uncertain terms. Why not? He gained nothing from refraining and everything for being honest. Unfortunately, said honesty immediately sent Millicent spiraling down into a ride in proper panic. He wished to fight General Radon. Something sparked in those rotten golden eyes. Alone. Probably not if Grerel has anything to say about it, but I will if I got it. Millicent climbed unsteadily to her feet. Allow me to aid you, then. Yeah, no. He shook his head. You just woke up and all. Her eyes met his. I. Will. Aid you. Don't discard me, her expression seemed to say. Don't cast me aside. Let me be of use to you. Please. I can't bear it. Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose. Pushy redeeds. Hirama was of no help at all whatsoever here, he wanted nothing to do with this and thus chose to stay silent. Which in turn left the onus of choice with him. He could hardly afford to turn Millicent out into the wilds as she was now. She might catch the rod a second time, and then where would he be? No, he couldn't turn her away. She'd probably follow him in any case. She seemed the sort for it. He stepped to her and grabbed her by the shoulder, sending another pulse of chakra through her body to strengthen her further. Millicent jumped with a yelp, one that was overshadowed by his words. Fine, you win. But stay close. I mean it. She ducked her head a touch and nodded. As my lord wills. Eh? Lord. Naruto poked himself in the chest. Me. That is what you are. The fervent belief in her words, the gleam in her eyes, startled him more than anything else he'd seen in this world. Only a lord would go so far as to help a perfect stranger, let alone convince an eclectic band of such as this to work together in pursuit of a common goal. And you bear great rune, do you not? He touched a hand to his chest, where Godric's rune even now pulsed with life. Well, you're not wrong on that front. Do you perhaps have a weapon I could use? She pressed her advantage before he could think to challenge her, her other account. I would prefer a longsword or a katana, if you have such. Didn't he have one of those? Naruto turned, regarding the bundle on Torrent's bag. He'd scrounged through a few of the battlefields they'd passed, leaving his steed saddlebags full to bursting. She didn't seem the sort for a greatsword, and a shortsword probably wouldn't be enough for someone like her. In a sec. It was the work of moments to find something that would suit her. He'd stumbled upon it by chance when some maniac attacked him near a cave. If it had a name, he didn't know it. He pressed a slender katana into her hands. Millicent accepted it, unsheathed the blade, and cut a quick slice through the air. A blade of light burst forth to annihilate it a nearby boulder with ease, leaving its severed halves to slide apart and crash down into the rot-ridden dirt. Naruto blinked. Curious, she sheathed it again and repeated the process twice more, producing an arc of blue transients each time. This is Moonvale. She whispered quietly, sheathing it for the final time, an ancient glintstone blade forged by a Celian sorcerer in times long past. Where did you find this? Naruto shrugged. By chance. Her gaze met his. No one's that lucky. Maybe I am. He offered a self-same smile. Dunno what to tell you. This is a fine blade. I gladly accept it. Only, abruptly, she flushed anew. Would you mind averting your eyes for a moment? Now what was she up to? Still, he sensed no ill intent and complied, presenting his left side to her as he looked away. All right, there. Would you want me to do this? Something warm, soft, and infinitely yielding touched his right cheek. Little more than a feather's brush, a lingering touch, it nevertheless startled him all the same. When he looked back, he found Millicent kneeling hastily before him, head bowed, one fist pressed against her bosom, eyes fixed firmly on the road underfoot. Karama perked up. Would you look at that? I've decided that I would rather trust you than simply continuing to spoil from within. Millicent's words were faint, almost a whisper, cheeks burning brighter than her hair. I had expected to die, to simply rot away, to be little more than a footnote in history. You changed that. And yet, though it shames me, I fear I must ask another boon of you. Her eyes met his, damp with unshed tears. Please, I beg of thee, take me into your service. Naruto's brow shot into his hair. Wanna run that by me again? I wish to aid you in your quest to become Elden Lord. The former amputee spoke quickly, hastily, even nearly tripping over herself in her haste to explain for fear of him denying her. Let me be your sword, your shield, your shadow and all things. As he looked on aghast, Millicent planted that fist into the dirt and bowed her head anew. I would protect you from all those that would do thee harm. Sullied though I am, I promise to uphold your vows, your morals, all that you are. 
And someday, this she added in a voice so faint even he had to strain to hear it, those that come after you. Oh. 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 Naruto's brain fizzled out when she didn't finish that sentence. How did one respond to a proposition like this? No, how could you respond? Help, please. Not a chance. Kurama snickered, grinning from ear to ear. You're on your own here. Have fun. His right eye began to twitch. Stop that. And so he spat out the first thing that came to mind, you're not sullied at all. Stand up. You can help me if you want, but don't go throwing yourself in the dirt. Her head rose tentatively. Will you accept my into your service? She wasn't going to get up until he said yes. Naruto just knew it. What did Shikamaru always say? Such a drag. Yes, sure, fine. He looked away, palming his face to hide burning cheeks. Now get up. Come on. You're embarrassing me. He felt a fierce flare of joy from the retreat as she climbed to her feet, one so powerful it threatened to take his breath away. For a singular moment she shone to his senses because of that singular emotion. She caught it and tamped it down quickly, compassing herself, but he couldn't forget what he'd seen. Pure girl. His mind bleated. Must protect. Then my sword is yours. Millicent straightened with a smile, all but glowing with pride. I promise, you shan't regret this. Although, she took a small, shy step toward him. Into his personal space, and touched a hand to one breast. I wonder what this feeling is. I feel oddly warm. Naruto's heart leaped into his throat. She was close. Too close, bring with her the scent of herbs. It was not an unpleasant arma. The triumphant shout shook the world, followed by a distant plume of dust. Millicent blinked. Once. Twice. Thrice now. Whatever was that. He heaved a sigh, almost disappointed by the distraction. Huh. Guess Grail found a troll. Champions welcome. Of all the greetings Naruto had expected in the courtyard, those were not among them. Beryl had been true to her word, by the time they'd caught up, the gate guard lay dead, and the castle gates were ripped asunder to grant them passage. Well, most of them. Lacking a human form, XX was forced to wait outside while they conducted their business within. He'd make a fine guard if anyone tried to creep up on their flank. Even so, no such ambush was forthcoming, for none barred their entry. The stars have aligned. Now they knew why, as a man's voice boomed out as they entered the plaza. The festival is nigh. Sure enough, his keen eyes spotted a masked man hoisting a flambridge high atop one of the ramparts well above them. His very voice brimmed with gusto. General Radon, mightiest demigod of the Shattering, awaits you. Millicent tilted her head to regard the bevy of warriors awaiting them within, some spectral, others mercifully solid. Seems a strange place to hold a festival. There's a human right. Grerl groused, lips pursed in a thin line as she glared at a giant jar. Thy kind has always been known for such foppery and finery. We dragons celebrate in a different fashion. Naruto couldn't help but quirk a brow at that. How so? Her hip brushed his in a telling fashion. Perhaps I shall show thee sometime. Millicent bridled in the corner of his eye, but said nothing. He knew she'd have words for her later. Mercifully, Melina manifested between them they could snap at one another. You should see the festivals in the capital, dragon. The bite in her words had him drawing back. They would put your petty rituals to shame. Beryl glared golden daggers at her, but with her ira thus diverted, Millicent took her chance and stuck to his side. Champions prepare for battle. Once more, the castellan's voice rang out above them, diverting their attention for the umpteenth time. Defeat the general. Claim glory and grab that great rune. His words peaked low with fervor bordering on mania now, as he addressed the scattered souls standing before them. Such is our celebration of war. The Radin Festival. Naruto scratched the back of his head, feeling more than a little chagrined guess we've got competition. Understatement of the century, there. He counted nearly a dozen stalwart men and women assembled in the plaza. A man wearing what he thought was a wolf's mask, a giant jar, a big brute in armor, a maiden clad in thin cloth, the list went on and on. He could have sworn he saw a samurai among them too, but surely that was impossible, why would one of Mifune's people be here? Never mind that, how many people were after this great rune? The low whinny of a horse cut through his thoughts. Naruto pivoted toward it, only to find himself somewhat caught out when he failed to find the source. That noise hadn't come from Torrent, the spectral steed was enjoying a well-earned rest outside with XX. And besides, this sounded bigger. Much bigger. Now who did he know that rode a giant horse? An answer smacked him upside the head. In the same instant, a long shadow fell over him from on high. A familiar shadow, one he knew all too well. Melina manifested not a stone's throw away, head tilted a fraction of an inch. Ah! was her sole exclamation. Twoud seemed she caught up. That was Naruto's only warning. Someone crashed down into the plaza directly behind him, startling every champion in the plaza. Dust kicked up and he flung up an arm against it as his hood was blasted back. 
Squinting into the haze, he beheld a mighty steed, and a mightier shape even now clamoring off its back. Dull gold armor glimmered in the light of the Erd tree, contrasting harshly against the crimson sky of Caled. A familiar grunt had his hackles rising. Then she was upon him. He barked out a laugh, knowing what was coming. Trish. Don't you dare. Too little, too late. The last word was only just leaving his mouth when a golden arm got hold of his ankle. Not a heartbeat later, he found hoisted himself into the air, all but dangled upside down like a child's toy. Blue eyes fluttered in a brief blink, gazing into that wrathful helm and the scowling face within. Hey. He managed a Cheshire grin. Mind putting me down. The tree sentinel poked him again, checking him over for wounds. Hey. He laughed. Not in front of my friends. Ow. I missed you, too. Did you really ride all the way out here? She must have. Melina confirmed his suspicions as she reappeared only a stone's throw away, looking faintly bemused by his plight. I lacked the strength to bring her with me. The tree sentinel made a decidedly unimpressed noise at that and waffled a golden hand in the Madian's general vicinity. For her part, she paid her little heed. Naruto winced at the fire there. Look, I really am sorry, but I didn't think I'd get you inked back in the round table, you know. Beryl tilted her head. Twold seem you don't lack for interesting company. However did you tame her? Bit of a long story there, and I didn't tame anyone. Then how did she enter her in your service? Millicent was giving the sentinel a rather odd look as well, all the while gripping her restored wrist. Leave it to her to focus on that. Another thought occurred to him as he dangled there. Her arm. Hey, that's right. I can heal you now. Almost forgot. Slipping out of the Trisha's grasp, he caught himself in a crouch and took a step forward, moving well into her personal space. Just take your helmet off and I can fix you right up. NNNGH. The tree sentinel made a noise that couldn't be anything other than a denial. A golden gauntlet slapped his chest, forcing him back a piece. What the heck? When she shook her head, setting the plume atop her helm swaying, understanding dawned. You don't want me to. She made a less than pleasant gesture across her throat, prompting a frown from him. Hoy. I still can't understand you. With a long-suffering sigh the sentinel snatched a stray dagger off a nearby table. Dragging its rusty edge, she used it to carve words into the dirt at their feet. My penance. Don't waste your strength on me. Not worthy. Indignation sparked in his soul. Screw that. I've got plenty of chakra left. Now off with your helmet. Trish shook her head anew, for all that good it did her. A quick step and a hop and he had hold of her helm, a twist of his wrists tore it free, revealing her wide eyes to the world. More than a few champions winced when they beheld her ruined visage. Millicent hissed. Grail actually made a rare noise of sympathy as she saw her scars. Even as she did, the tree sentinel slammed back, furiously shaking her head. It's not gonna hurt, I swear. Naruto stepped after her. Here, just hold still. Melina laid a hand on his wrist. Now is not the time. Surely she has a reason for resisting you so. Perhaps you should wait until after the battle. Naruto nearly protested until he saw the look on Trisha's face. Although she loomed over the lot of them, she suddenly looked fit to bolt no, she was afraid. Terrified. Not of him, but something else. What, then? What had her so spooked that she wouldn't accept healing? In the end, he chose to heed Melina's advice just this once. He'd seek the sentinel's secrets after Radin was dealt with. Here. He tossed her helm back and stalked up the steps. I'll be having words with you when this is over. Stay put, you know. I'll be right back. Without pausing to see her reaction, he left a lot of them behind to have words with the Castellan. It was as much an excuse to get away from the look in her eyes as anything else, he couldn't bear to see Trish wearing an expression like that. Imagine his surprise then, when he found the man waiting for him atop the rampart. Aha. It seems we have a godless heir among us. Despite his aged mask, the man beneath it all sounded heartened as he turned to meet him. Come to grab another great rune have you, young chum? There was something almost merry in that affable voice that both made him lower his guard and tense in the same instant. You know me. I know of you, rather. The castellan cackled merrily. I didn't think the slayer of Godric would grace us with his presence. Ah. Seemed word had gotten out after all. Why does everyone know about that? Lad, you're the first tarnished to hold a great rune since Vike, may the stars smile upon his sorry soul. The aging warrior made a strange sign before his own chest, nodded, then jerked a glove thumb toward Naruto and the pulsing golden green shard, even now beating near his heart. But I'm afraid you'll find no easy prey here. Godric was. The runt of the litter, I know. He felt an old anger overtake him. Why speak ill of the dead? Whatever he'd once been, he was gone now. The others will be stronger, yada 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 I've heard it all effer. And you are. Call me Jaren, lad. Quick bow of that bearded mask. I imagine you have questions about the good general. I do. He certainly did. 
It was why he'd come up here in the first place. Who is Radon? What's he like? Was he another god Rick? Another monster to be put down? He hoped not. Allow me to paint you the full picture. Jaren swung an arm out past him, towards the wailing dunes below, where monuments of blades and banners stood etched within. General Radon was, and still is a mighty warrior, strongest demigod of his generation. Now, he is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside, by Melenia's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. His voice dipped in rare melancholy, head hanging just a touch before he recovered himself. Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog howling at the sky. The baleful roar echoed from the dunes. Naruto swallowed despite himself. So he's lost his mind. Long ago. Jiren didn't even sound sad to say it anymore, just. Dot resigned. But now we must make merry, he righted himself as he looked on, for the time has come to give him his rest. Quick as a flash the castellan pivoted back to Melina and the others below, hoisting his flamberge high once more. Oh gathering of champions, the revels begin. Our celebration of war. His sword crashed down, splintering the wood beneath him with a sonorous crack. The Radon Festival. Color me surprised. Didn't think the old coot would be that honorable. Though now, said old soul straightened up. Speak with the others. Make your preparations. It will take a great man of you to stand even a slim chance against our commander. Naruto pivoted, stifling a second sigh of his own. Don't have to tell me me twice. Jaren called out to him before he could take a single step. Boy. He stilled. Yeah. Give him a good battle, won't you? Naruto reached up and tugged at his headband. I'll do my best. Alexander perked up the moment he saw them. How could he not? This was to be a festival of champions after all. And these were a sterling sword indeed. Nor was he the only one to take notice of them. Berlina was but a humble finger maiden. She didn't consider herself particularly strong compared to some of the heroes here, but she was well versed with incantations of the Golden Order and quick on her feet. Such was was expected of her naturally, for she served the will of the two fingers, bringing their grace and guidance to all whom cared to listen. And one day someday soon. She would share that strength with her tarnished. She still hadn't found him or her. Yet, but Theralina was certain she would eventually encounter her destined one. The two fingers had promised her, after all. Such was the guidance of grace. She just hadn't searched in the right places. Yes, that was it. Long had she scoured high and low, following rumors all about the lands between, hoping in vain. Until finally, finally, she stumbled upon an odd man known as Seljavis. Such a strange wizard that one, but he'd proven himself a relatively trustworthy sort thus far, twas he who took her in when she was starving, twas he who first told her about this festival, twas he who even offered her a potion to help her on her quest. She would have gladly take him up on the ladder, but she did not wish to be indebted to him any further than she already was. And so she had kindly refused the tonic he offered and taken her leave with great thanks, promising to return if she failed to find her intended here. She must succeed here. She did not wish to impugn upon his generosity any longer. Surely she would find her tarnished in these grounds. Twas a tournament of champions, after all, sure to attract tarnished far and wide. Doubtless some already had maidens of their own, but surely, surely there was at least one here without, one person who could fulfill her purpose, make her feel complete. Mon, Melina. The voice of a young man plucked her from her misery as surely as a bird would a worm. It'll be fine. Will not be fine. A woman snapped back. I'll not see you herring off again without a plan. Drawn by these words the young finger maiden pivoted, seeking their source. Imagine her surprise then, when her eye fell upon a strapping young blonde being fussed over by not one, not two, but four women. Clad in amber drakescale armor, he stood apart from the rest not solely for that, but for his aura alone. Fair of face was he, with striking blue eyes and whiskered cheeks even now dimpled in a sunny smile. But what truly drew her attention was the great rune pulsing in his chest. As a finger maiden Theralina recognized its make at once, for the wisdom of the fingers was always with her. Twas the rune of Godric. There could be no doubt. Ah. She understood now. Like so many others, this one sought the rune of Radon. Theralina couldn't abide that. She needed the great rune. With one such as that, she could find her destined tarnished. The other shardbearers were out of reach, or otherwise beyond her meager means to find. But here, if she had help, here, with numbers on her side she had her chance. Her best chance her last chance. Her only chance. The blonde blinked suddenly, regarding another competitor. That is a big dog. Half-wolf, actually. The being retorted. He talks. Berlina almost found herself smiling despite herself as the two struck up a rapport. Was that the half-wolf blade, Shadow Tyranny? The two fingers might be pleased to learn of his location when next she visited the round table. Still, her eyes strayed to the woman near the blonde as the duo conversed. 
The Dragonkin woman bickered with a reed, while a towering woman in golden armor glared bloody daggers at a lass bearing one eye. Oddly enough, the other looked to have been sealed by something. The other was fixed firmly on the blonde. That last thought tore at her heartstrings. She had the look of a maiden. Which meant the blonde wasn't the one. He'd no need of her. If he already had a maid intending to his every need, he would not take a second. Rare was the sort who did such, and rarer still the blonde that persisted as two maidens fraught over a single tarnished. And yet. Berlina turned her gaze inward. She could feel the strength of runes lingering about him, a great many of them. Hundreds, no, hundreds of thousands, untapped power jut waiting to be unleashed at the right moment. Surely if he had a maiden, all those runes would have been turned to strength long ago. But he hadn't used any of them. Not a one. What then, did that mean? The tiny, timid hope bloomed in Therlina's heart. Did he not have a maiden after all? He looked her way suddenly, no doubt sensing her gaze. The moment their eyes, Therlina averted her own and managed a polite bow. He returned it with an awkward wave, by the time she looked up, he was distracted yet again. Thank the fingers for small mercies. She couldn't bring herself to speak to him. No, nay, not yet. She dare not approach, not now, not when he was surrounded by so any, certainly not with that giant jar trundling their way. To approach him now would only see her swept up with the others, one voice lost among many. But perhaps yes. After the battle she would try. If she lived. If Radin didn't slay her. So many ifs. She just had to survive. There he is. Naruto saw a giant shape across the dunes, a great hulking warrior that dwarfed them all. The distant figure of Radin moved with impossible speed. An arrow hurtled their way. Millicent yelped. Radin feasted. He bent low to the ground and gorged himself on another would-be champion, tearing great strips from their flesh with his teeth alone. His teeth scoured rotten flesh, managing little more than a few middling bites before he had his full. His meal secured, he reared back and howled at the sky. Kill and eat. Eat and kill. He killed and he ate. He ripped and tore. It was all he was. All he knew. All that he could do. Sometimes there were moments in which he despaired, brief seconds of sanity that surfaced once every decade or so. Even now in his mad state, his body falling apart, his organs rotted, his instincts yet remained. His addled mind still clung to three precious tenets, even now. They anchored him. Must not eat Leonard. Leonard was horse. Horse was good boy, all he had left of his family. Hold back the stars. Do not let them fall. Never let them fall. And above all fight. Fight, so that he might end. So long as he held the stars back, the world would be safe. Someone had told him that once. A man with red hair. He no longer remembered who. There were monsters in the stars. Beasts that came from the void, cruel creatures who loved not and knew only destruction. So long as he held the cosmos in check, all was well. But there was another Ryazan, wasn't there? And Rani Rani would be safe. Rani? Who was Rani? He no longer knew. There. Movement in the dunes. The moment fizzled out and Radin riding himself, reaching for his great bow. A giant hand ripped three spears from his skewered back and took aim. Twas a simple action. Gravity magic flared, forming a distant nebulae at the tip of his arrow, as he drew the string back back, back yet further. His eyes saw much, even at this distance, chief among them a woman with stark red hair. The rod in him stirred at the sight, seething like the frenzied flame itself. Braddon recalled a woman with such flaming locks. Rotted though he was, his body knew well the face of the one who had brought this blight upon him. Melenia. Blade of Maquella. Rotten, dishonorable witch who couldn't bear to take a loss. And now she was come again, come to mock him, taunt him, torment him. Her fault. All her fault. He loosed the arrow with hate in his heart. Straight and true did it fly, crossing the distance in an instant before they could hope to react. The cry of pain reached his ears. One down. He could see dark shapes racing across the sands toward him now. Braddon roared a challenge at them. Something roared back. Braddon. The man's voice ripped through the wailing dunes, a shockwave of sound tearing across heaps of broken weapons and moldering bones to reach him. And for the first time since the rot had come upon him, Starscourge Radin quivered. But not in fear. Nay. He shuddered for an altogether different reason. Twas a brief momentary thing, but it gave his prey time enough to speak again. I came here to face a champion. His voice was fire and death, hope and light incarnate. I am still waiting. Come and get me. Unless you're afraid. Braden's heart sang. Those words. A worthy foe. A good death. And end. At last. Long had he waited. The last broken scrap of his mind howled and as he did, he heard the challenger howl back. Something stirred in him as he spurred Leonard forward with all due speed. Stowing his bow, he drew his blades and howled at the sky. A glorious battle. An end. That was all he wanted. Finish me please. Oh. Naruto hissed furiously as he ripped a great arrow from his shoulder. 
it went unwillingly, worsening his wound, but he grit his teeth and forced it free fro his flesh. Blood spattered the sands, drawing a fair share of gasps fro his companions. He shut his ears to them. Not a small wound by any means or measure, but what choice did he have? If he hadn't shoved Millicent aside at the last moment there, that would be her skewered in the sands. He could take a hit like this and laugh it off. She couldn't. What was one more scar by comparison? Had to be him. He could tank things like this. He could live. My lord. That wound. At his flank, he was vaguely aware of Millicent fretting over him, his sword sword fingers running down the length of his arm. Bless her simple soul. He patted her shoulder with a smile and let her haul him upright, truth be told her help wasn't needed, but it was pivotal that she felt useful. If even a single arrow struck Millicent, she would die. She didn't have Trisha's armor, nor did she possess Grail's draconic vitality. She couldn't vanish into the ether and hide like Melina, either. Fiend. Just give him a second. Forcing Chakra to the wound was easier than ever before. Almost effortless. Godric's rune had empowered every aspect of him, regeneration included. An injury like this would close in a few minutes. Hardly enough to slow him down even if it did enrage his companions. Trish took one look at his wood, snarled, and leaped onto her mount. Greryl raced barefoot into the dunes beside her. Most of the others followed their lead and charged in, seeking strength in numbers. Naruto alone lingered. You cannot heal him as you did the others. Melina appeared at his side in a shower of blue light, as the last of his wound stitched itself shut. He's rotted, inside and out, and for far longer. Hmm. She scowled at him. He was at the epicenter of the blast that ravaged Caled. Whatever you're plotting, it won't work. Naruto lifted his chin in mulish defiance, he was sure it was writ across his face. Won't work, she said. Wouldn't know until he tried. But first he needed Radin's attention on him. On him, and away from everyone else. There was only one way to do such. Time to put on an act to end all acts, something he hadn't done since he was a boy. Millicent saw the look in his eye and scowled. My lord, no. Don't you dare. Too late. Radin. Naruto stepped forward spread his arms wide, voice echoing across the wailing dunes. I came here to face a champion. I am still waiting. Still grinning, he turned around, bent over, and slapped his flank. Come and get me. Unless you're afraid. A moment of awful silence followed. And then. The world shook with an answering roar. Someone whistled behind him. Big brass balls on this one. Naruto never saw who it was, he was already bounding forward, fixed on the melee in the distance. Milson pelted after him at his left, and a rustle of cloth told him Melina was hovering near his right. He knew better than to tell her to step aside this time. She had done that for him once. Never again. The first blow decided the course of the battle. It also nearly killed Millicent. Naruto moved to intercept the moment Radin closed with her, only to find that there was no need or time for him to do anything. Much to his surprise the Redeed bounded forward and leaped into the air, leaving a giant blade to sweep harmlessly underfoot. The second came racing and hot on the heels of the first, only for her to kick off its edge with both feet, using the blackened blade as a springboard to further her leap. She hung in the air for a moment in blatant defiance of gravity. Parallel with his chest, her sword arm rose. Radin looked down. Millicent's blade swung up, sheathing Moonvale in an impossible arc and then. The blade flew free and so did she. Dot. Radin roared in surprise as Millicent's weapon upon him in a storm of glowing azure blades, whirling and flowing as he'd only ever seen once before. All combat ceased as she single-handedly forced him back. The ring on Naruto's finger sang in blissful harmony, bringing two words to the forefront of his mind. Waterfowl dance. Whatever it was, it put Radin on the back leg. No, a quick glance confirmed didn't have feet. They'd long since rotted away at the ankles, leaving him to rely on his scrawny steed for locomotion. Locomotion he could not maintain as he staggered under the storm. Shoulders sagged, armor buckled beneath the onslaught of steel and blue light. Millicent didn't give him the chance to counter. She just kept moving, ripping into him as if she'd been born for this, created for nothing but this singular moment. But her stamina wasn't infinite. Radin was a demigod. She was not. Rumbling like thunder, he warded the blows away with one sword. The other rose. Naruto saw the counter coming in the same moment that Millicent finally faltered. Trish. The tree sentinel stepped in seamlessly as the redeed fell to a knee and brandished her golden shield. Naruto stepped in behind her, swept Millicent up, and darted back. Those starscourge greats words descended and combat resumed. Trish ducked behind her shield, ready to weather the storm. And weather it she did. Her defenses held in the face of his fury, enduring not one, but three singular strikes that would have split a lesser warrior in half. Radin ignored those tearing at his flesh and raised both blades high, prepared to break her guard with an overhand smash, only for both blades to smack into a pair of open palms. The mad demigod made a noise of confusion and glared down at the immutable barrier that had saved her life. 
Beryl grinned up at him, exposing rows of razor-sharp teeth in a wild leer. Hum. Scales sprouted from her flesh. Face a dragon. She kicked outward, staggering him. From there it all dissolved into a mad melee of blows. Naruto made the mistake of parrying a greatsword, the impact alone nearly ripped his arm from its socket and forced him to punch up with the other. Clenched knuckles barreled into Radin's chin. His head snapped back, but still, he remained seated atop his horse and came at him again. A Rasengan put paid to that, warping his armor to tear at his flesh, but still he didn't go down. And was with that horse. The sight nearly brought the blonde up short. How on earth could a giant like Radin ride such a scrawny steed without crushing it? His hesitation nearly cost him an arm, even then he barely got his guard up time. The Starscourge greatsword swept down, seeking his head. Giant golden palms rose to meet them, not to deflect this time, but rather to meet the blade's head on his grail head. Unlike her, he caught the blades and yanked them down, wielder and all. Radin and his mount crashed into the sand. When they tried to rise, he raised his fists and brought all his strength down on the general's back, using Karama's paws as battering rams. He could hardly use his full form here, doing so would harm his allies. And there were many of them now, more than he could count. Here he heard Blade howl, then saw the half-wolf pounce onto the general's thigh, driving his frozen greatsword deep. Radin roared in pain, but even as he sought to rip him apart, Grail rent the giant's chest with her claws, causing yet further blood loss. Millicent crouched backwards, steadied herself, then flew into a fresh flurry of blows that hammered the general's wounded back. Melina landed atop his back and drove a dagger deep, only for the general to buck and hurtle her away. A certain jolly jar caught her, spun around, and flung the kindling maiden back into the fray with a mighty cry. Others joined in, raining down blows on the general from all sides, chipping away at his mighty vigor. They were wearing him down. Slowly but surely. Now if they could just knock him down. And then the tempo changed. Braddon shuddered to a stop atop his tiny, aging mount, gone still as stone. Naruto swore softly, not like the look of that one bit. What in the? The low growl seemed to rattle the dunes, no, the very air itself. Braddon was still snarling when he leaped into the air. The world fell silent. Millicent looked left first. Naruto looked right. Frowned. And then. He remembered to look up. Alright, where did he is that a meteor? So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.